So let's recap learning for our socket circuit. We installed a radial socket circuit in steel conduit using the basic principles laid out in BS7671 for an A3 radial in a domestic dwelling. This is not a domestic dwelling because it's obviously in steel conduit, but uses the same principles. In other words, the overcurrent protection device within the consumer unit is rated at 20 amps, and the circuit is wired in 2.5 millimeter squared for all three conductors as it is in single. So we haven't used a reduced CPC, so all conductors are 2.5 millimeter squared. Often on site, you can see people slip in a 16 amp device in here, and we know that's not acceptable. We're trying to get discrimination, a word that will be changed in the 18th edition to selectivity between our overcurrent protection devices. The BS1363 socket outlet has a maximum fuse size in the plug top that goes with it of 13 amps. These are rated at 13 amps, as are the plug tops that goes in there. Therefore, if there's a fault in the item that's being plugged in, say it has a 13 amp fuse, and we only installed a 16 amp breaker in the consumer's unit, we don't get active discrimination or active selectivity, depending on when you're watching this video, between devices. In other words, we can't guarantee the plug top fuse would operate before the overcurrent protection device in the consumer's unit. And for that reason, we're going to install a 20 amp fuse in the consumer's unit and wire it in 2.5 millimeter squared cable. Again, depending on when you're watching this video, the circuit will need additional protection by an RCD. We've got an RCCB here. Additional protection meaning the rated value of the RCD must be 30 milliamps or below. And we have a 30 milliamp RCD selected inside the consumer's unit itself. Now, depending on when you're watching this video, whether we're in the 17th or the 18th edition, you may have to adjust your thinking. This socket outlet, as we said previously, is rated at 13 amps. All socket outlets currently under the 17th edition rated at 20 amps and below must be additionally protected by an RCD rated at 30 milliamps or less. That will change under the 18th edition and that's going to be all socket outlets including 32 amps and below. So 32 amps and below socket outlets will need additional protection by an RCD rated at 30 milliamps or below. So just be careful when you're watching this video which of the two statements is correct for your exam. So RCD here, rate of 30 milliamps for us, must disconnect the circuit within 40 milliseconds when five times the rated value of current is found. So in other words, if it's rated, in this case at 30 milliamps, when 150 milliamps is present under earth fault conditions, the RCD must disconnect within 40 milliseconds to offer additional protection. We know on completing our job that we must reinstate the IP rating of all our electrical enclosures and we know the IP rating of the top of any electrical enclosure needs to be IP4X and the rest of the enclosure, so that's the sides, the bottom and the front on completion of the installation must have an IP rating of IP2X. We also know our installation has exposed conductive parts and our exposed conductive parts need connecting to earth and we need to be able to determine what an exposed conductive part is in our exam. So if it's electrical and metal, it's an exposed conductive part for us. So the metal clad socket, exposed conductive part. Metal conduit, exposed conductive part. Metal clad consumers unit, exposed conductive part. And they will need to be connected to earth. We know that we also have extraneous conductive parts, and they are things such as a metallic water pipe, metallic gas pipe, the metallic structure of the building, and they may also be required to be connected to earth, depending on whether we're in the 17th or 18th edition wiring regulations, depending on whether our incoming water and gas are in plastic or incoming water and gas are in metal, we can work out therefore whether they are an extraneous conductive part and therefore connected to the earth family. When wiring in our conduit system, again, we're going to be using single insulated PVC cables, like so. PVC, reminder, it stands for polyvinyl chloride, and we're using thermoplastic PVC cables, which have a maximum operating temperature of 70 degrees. Remember, we can also get thermosetting, sometimes known as cross-linked polyethylene, which has a maximum operating temperature of 90 degrees C. Once again, they're constructed from stranded copper, for greater flexibility when being pulled in. And the circuit we wire in, as we stated before, is in 2.5 millimeter squared for all conductors within the conduit system itself. When pulling them in, we're gonna use a nylon draw through tape. One end has what I call uh, a mouse on it, which is sent in first and goes around the actual conduit system. And the other one has an eyelet hook, which you attach your conductors on. 
you cannot pull a full wiring system through the conduit without having points of exit. In other words, uh, we can draw the cables out for uh, reducing the stress on the conductors as you pull them in. And in this installation, we have a 90 degree preformed with an inspection chamber on the front, meaning that we can remove the inspection chamber and pull out the conductors at that point before re-entering them. So conductors went in through the consumer's unit, out at the inspection point, and then back in again and up to the socket outlet, reducing the stress on the conductors when pulling them in. General purpose steel conduit that we used was seam welded. However, we did discuss the fact that you can get solid drawn conduit used in gas tight installations. That's where all electrical accessories would also have to be gas tight. And we suggested a solid drawn conduit system, maybe in some petrochemical, uh, things like spray booths, flour mills, where there's highly explosive atmospheric gases or powders in the air. So we're using for general use seam welded conduit, but to be aware that we also could use solid drawn in certain special locations. So along with my lighting circuit that we did in steel conduit, where we picked up the sizes of conduit, we picked up the different types of fixings, we've gone on and added to that the knowledge required in order to complete the Instech now that we're doing a steel conduit uh, socket circuit. So we've added in the fact that we must have an RCD for additional protection. We talked about discrimination or selectivity between the device in the consumer's unit and the socket outlet itself. We've said when we must install RCDs and we've also said how that will change as we move towards the 18th edition wiring regulations. I hope this video has been some help.